Okay, guys, we're back this week. Do y'all have any questions about what we covered last week? Did y'all use it? Auto punctuation. Please be honest. I don't remember like what it was. Would it be auto punctuation? Yeah, the auto punctuation and the. Uh, speaker. Was it more speakers or was that too easy? I actually wanted to wait to see if you had time after class or. I don't the know conflicts and auto punctuation. Yeah, conflicts, not. If what? If you would have time after class because I kind of wanted to identify my speakers but I'm scared to like put them in there because I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. Like doing attorney one, attorney two, attorney three, attorney four, so that way I can get used to hitting the banks like what yeah. I'm supposed to when they're yeah. speaking or whatever. Why? Um, because I don't want to mess anything up, and then I'm not going to know how I got there, and then not know how to go back and fix it if I did mess something up. You know what I mean? So, which is why I brought them. Do them, do them now. We'll do it now. Well, I wait. I mean, if we want to wait until after we do the numbers. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, this week we're going to talk about numbers. Um, guys, this, this one's kind of important, so really pay attention, okay? Not that you usually don't, but pay attention, <clears throat> okay? With Eclipse, two basic steps will give you excellent number translation. Fine-tune your dictionary and fine-tune your number settings. Settings. Pure number bar strokes aren't even necessary in your dictionary. Other numbers building blocks will be defined as words, not digits. Hundred, thousand, million, describe orders of magnitude. Write the word dollars when you hear it, not before, and it, like other money words, will trigger number conversion with the appropriate currency symbol. If a number doesn't translate right, it's probably because of an old dictionary entry. Remove such entries and your building blocks will work properly. A separate presentation deals with finding and moving entries in and out of your dictionary. Occasionally you'll want to convert numbers after translation. Mark the number first, then click on the toolbar icon, or use the menu or the speed key, control and the pound key together. Here you see your number as it starts out, and as it would look, depending on which format you choose. However, your numbers settings will control, and so the gear icon takes you quickly to adjust those settings. Within these short presentations, it's not possible to show all that Eclipse automatic number conversion can do. So a separate, in-depth ePower video tutorial is available on automatic number conversion. Can you go back to where he, how he got the number conversion box? Well, they're, they're going to kind of go into it in depth. They're just going to kind of, that just kind of showed you what I think they're going to do in this thing, okay? It kind of goes in depth a little bit more. Here are two quick examples of how to fine-tune your numbers settings. Settings. The numbers section of your user settings asks two general questions. First, how do you write numbers? So what do you even want number conversion to process? And second, what kinds of numbers do you want in words as opposed to digits? You see what it's telling you right there? Go into Alt-U. go into numbers that's where this is that's where all of these settings are right here okay so if you want to ignore written numbers so if you if you write out your numbers but you want them in written form then you need to click that bar and some people do that's how they write their numbers okay I use the number bar. Do y'all use the number bar? Sometimes. I write mine out. So you're saying that I wouldn't click on ignore with numbers. I write mine out. Like I, I have one strokers for every number. For one through a hundred. 
Wow. So how would I do that? It's going to tell you here in a bit. <clears throat> okay. What kinds of numbers do you want in words as opposed to digits? This first writer doesn't use the number bar and wrote the word and when it was heard. So ignore written numbers is not turned on, but process and as part of a number is turned on. So that's what you need. So if you write out your numbers, you do not need that checked. But if you write it and they say $311 and you write and, then it's going to process and as a number. So it's just going to leave it out. Okay? What if you do a combination of both? Yeah, that's why I use the number bar sometimes and I write out sometimes. Yeah. Well, and it's going to tell you here in just a bit too because there's a way to do that. Because like when I want it in a word, I write it in a word. But when I want it in numeral, then I write it with the number bar. If they say 1993, sometimes I'll write 19 and then I'll write 93 with the number bar. I don't know, it's whatever my mind just does on that. Yeah, mine I'll do 19 with the number bar and then I'll write out 93 because too many strokes. My numbers are messed That's, up. I need to figure and out. And that may be a problem because you're doing stuff on one on one stroke, if that makes sense. 1993, I consider not one stroke, but I mean, you know, you have several strokes in one word. So to write it out in words and in numbers may create a problem. Like if I'm behind, sometimes I'll do a combination. Yeah. I'll usually normally do one or the other if I'm on top of it, but if I'm behind, it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Number bar and, which I think is my problem. Let, let's see what they say. There might There might be something for that. But for you, that's what you need. Ace. No check. Do you write and? Do you? If what I a trick it, question. If I hear it, if I hear it, sometimes yes, I would. Okay. Then you're gonna want to check that. You're gonna want to check, you know, if it says uh, 143 and 23 cents. $143.23 and you write and, okay? For general quantity numbers, this user has eclipsed right out one through 10, but put 11 and above in digits. For currency, do not write out any numbers, just use digits. And for ordinals, write out first through 10th. There are different. You see that? You see what they're saying there? Hmm. For quantity, numbers, this user has eclipsed right out 1 through 10, but put 11 and above in digits. You see what it's saying? Which, I don't do it. So mine are going to write out all of them. Because I can quantity, if I write the number, then I want the number. So you don't follow the rule, anything that's 10 or below is written out. No. Above as a digit, as opposed not to necessarily for me. Not necessarily for me. Is that just is that the, just the preference of how they want you to do it? It all depends on what they're talking about too. Uh, you know, like when he says, uh, "How old was that boy?" Uh, the boy is five. I write the number five. I don't put F I V E. I've heard that some reporters do that for ease of reading a person yeah. so they can find it yeah. quicker. Well, when they say five years, five years old, he's five years old. I, I put the number. We do that on tests. We use five years old. We use a number. We use a number to start an account as wrong. It looks, it looks better to me. And, like, I mean, I don't know what the rule is on the English. But yeah, check Morton. You know, but if it starts a sentence, it's always in words. How old was a boy? Five. You don't put the number five. The only time you put five is money, years, um, stuff like that. Okay? That's the way I do it. 
do it. It all depends. Um, you know, at the beginning of the sentence, yeah, I would write it five pounds. But you want to stay consistent, okay? So, like, if they're talking about the kid's age, and you say, well, how old is the boy? Uh, he's five, F-I-V-E. Did you say that he was five years old? The boy is five years old, F-I-V-E. I would keep it consistent right then, okay? Just because you did it at the beginning of the sentence. So you already did the F-I-V-E. One, because at the beginning of the sentence, you're always, I, I mean, and that's the way that I was always taught, is that the numbers are always uh, written out. It's always written out when it's at the beginning of the sentence, okay? Whether you want to do it that way, kind of up to you, all right? For currency, do not write out any numbers, just use digits. You see what it's saying there? You don't need any values on currency because when you hit the dollars, it's automatically going to put it into dollars. Okay? Like when we write dollars? Yeah. Like when it says, how much was it? It was $500. You put 5, H-U-N, D-L-A-R-S. And it makes it large. Yeah. And it's going to show you here in just a bit on how to set it up to where it's going to do that. And for ordinals, write out first through tenth. So you understand what it's saying right there on ordinals? Yes. No. It's not a trick question, guys. I'm asking. It's saying the same thing about the other ones, right? It writes out one through ten. It writes it out because it's saying first, second, third, instead fourth. Of fifth, yeah, instead ST, of doing one ST, two ND. ND. It's going to write it out, and then after that, like on 11th, then it's going to do 11th, one, 12th. One th, one Isn't that how it's supposed to be? Like, supposedly that's or it's grammatically yeah. correct? Yeah. And that's why it says 1 through 10 on ordinal. So make sure your ordinal is checked. Check your ordinal 1 through 10, 1 through 100 at start. Okay? They say first, second, third, and you write that out, but once they get to 11, you do 1, 1, 2, 8. Yeah. What if we did all the other ones? Say they're naming 12 things, first, second, third, and You want to keep it consistent. You want to keep it consistent. So, spell out the first one, yeah. or have to spell out. And like, like you know, the, the uh, auto magic is going to give you that option. Okay? So say you have, a, you know, well, it was the first, second, 8th, 11th, 12th. So you have words. 1st, 2nd, 8th, 11th is 1-1-T-H, one, one, and 12th is 1-2-T-H. Well, when you go on 11th, Automagic is automatically going to have it. E-L-E-V-E-N-T-H. So it's going to give you that option. All you have to do is just change it. So you want to keep it consistent. Okay? But any other time, you do want it like that. You do want 11 as 11th. One, one, so if you're on the same page and you had 11th at the top and all the way at the bottom of the page, they made first since you, wait, this one. <laughs> if they had first yourself. on the top, yeah. they obviously wrote that out. But then way at the bottom, they're talking about the 11th. You have to write that out too since you wrote it out. If it's at the beginning of the sentence, you write it out. Well, no, I'm saying you said to be consistent. Yeah. They're talking about first, we write it out. But then later on in the transcript, they talk about 11. Since in I the middle of the sentence? Yeah. No. Or, yes. or anywhere. Since I well, if it's at the beginning of the sentence, like I told you, it stays the words. Okay, well, what if it's not the beginning of the okay, sentence? Okay, then it all depends on what the context is. Well, when, when did he go? He went on the 11th of May. Well, you're not going to write E-L-E-V-E-N-T-H of May. It's 1-1-T-H. But it's kind of that way with dates. When dates are like that, well, when did he go? He went the 1st of March. It's not F-I-R-S-T. Unless he went the beginning of March, the first part, if that's the way they meant it, the first part, 
It's not the one ST part of main. Or if they're saying the eleventh rule. The eleventh rule? It's probably EL. So I mean, and that's the thing about English is there's no steadfast rule. Sometimes you're gonna have to change it, and that's why auto magic is there. Because it's gonna give you that. Even if you have, because I write my ordinals in E. So one E is first, two E is second, three E. My E represents the ordinal, okay? So when I have it, even if it has one E and it has, you know, F-I-R-S-T or one S-T, I can put my cursor on it and it still gives me all of the different things. So if I have F-I-R-S-T and it comes up here in number one, it's gonna give me one ST. And it's gonna give me one dollar. And it's gonna give me one o'clock. So it's gonna give me all the different methods that you can write one. I know it sounds confusing, but I mean, there's no steadfast rule about like ordinals. And that's what, I mean, this, this thing, the software itself is not here to teach you the right or wrong about English. It's not. It's just telling you how to set it up and how most of the time, 90% of the time, 85% of the time, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out and then how you're going to need it. Okay? Does that make sense? Enough? Enough sense? There are different settings for what to write out at the start of a sentence. And as of one million, Eclipse will use words to make large round numbers easier to read. You see what it's telling you there? And that's what I was telling you guys. Eclipse will use words to make large. You don't want to write this out. Well, how many were there? There were a million. There were one million. See how it's easier to read that than it is that? And that's what it's going to do. It's going to set it up like that. Unless you're talking about dollars, then it's going to set it up like that in numerals. Okay? So that's what it's set up to do. Large round numbers easier to read. This number bar user uses word strokes to indicate when a number from 1 to 10 should not be in digits. You see what it's saying right there? When you don't want it in digits, which it doesn't need to be, about three purchases. It's not the number three. It's not three purchases. It's three. T-H-R-E-E. -E, three. Okay? Guys, really? I mean, y'all get. I mean, y'all have this look like. Uh, I mean, it's wrong, or you know something different. No, are you are you understanding it? No, tell me you're not. No, okay. yeah, I I understand that. I understand about being consistent. I understand that the rule is for us anyway, as far as tests go. One through ten is always written out, but then they also do tell us to be consistent. So, when you, at the beginning of a sentence, say the, the sentence starts with the word five. Mm -hmm. Later on, page two of the transcript, they say another number. To stay consistent with our numbers, do we go ahead and just continue to write? No, I mean, it all no, depends on what it is. It all depends. It all depends on the context. So, I mean, you know, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you know, because you put the number five up here, you wouldn't necessarily change that because, you know, it, it's all about the context, you know, if up right. here they were talking about, you know, like the way that I do it, five years old, I put five in the number five right. years old, okay? And now here they're talking about something different. This is three purchases totaling, and you know that there's going to be numbers, okay? So I'm going to rewind it just a bit. This number bar user uses word strokes to indicate when a number from 1 to 10 should not be in digits. So ignore written numbers is turned on and Eclipse is not being asked to write out any values. 
You got it? When they will, oh, they will never use the number bar? Hmm? No, they are using the number bar. They are using the number so, bar. But when you write your numbers in words, you want it to come out as words, but when you write them as numbers and you use the number bar, then you want them to come out as numbers. So you put ignore written numbers if you intend on when you write a number out as a word, it will always stay as a word as opposed to try to convert it to a digit? Yeah. But in AutoMagic, it's going to give you that option. So if you want to change it, you can. Okay. okay? But, but like us, where we write with the combination of the two, we would have that word <laughs> done. When you ride with a combination of two in the same stroke, <laughs> you're going to have some difficulties. Okay. I panic and I use both and I look back at the But you know what? I mean, if that's if that's your biggest deal, it doesn't matter. As long as you get out of school, it doesn't matter because you can always fix it. It can always be fixed. So don't worry about if that's the way you hear it. Okay? You worry about just getting it, okay? This is gonna make it easier if you stay consistent, but if you don't, don't worry about it, okay? You just write what you hear, and if that's the way that you hear it, then you write what, what, you, what you hear, take it down to get out of school. You can always fix it later. If it takes a couple of seconds to fix it, who cares? You're out of school working, making money, so who cares? Is there a fear of having that ingrained too far and then that prevents us from being able to achieve real-time writing? No, I mean because, trust me, I, I've been out 23 years and I still change my writing. I'm still changing stuff, so it doesn't matter. You know, you, it's never ingrained enough to where when you know that your hands are hurting because you're writing too much, because you're writing harder, not smarter, you'll know. And trust me, you don't forget, okay? Because I thought, oh man, I'm, I'm never gonna use briefs. Well, I didn't. So if they tell you, you, have, you need to use briefs to get out of school, I'm living proof you don't need briefs to get out of school. It's the want to get out of school, okay? That's what it is. So it's not about briefs and whatever. It's hearing it, writing it, that's it. It doesn't matter how fast you go. You're only gonna go so fast anyway. Now whether it helps you with your briefs to go a little bit faster, guys, it's not that big of a deal. It's not, okay? So don't think that you need to have all of these briefs to get out of school, you don't, okay? I guess I just get worried with 